complaining. Karamoja is also complaining as we are complaining that there are people who are raiding it. And they say, oh, for also, we also need compensation. Aha, uh -huh, they lost cows. So these are issues that is pertinent to the people of northern Uganda. Two, we are the biggest contributors of poverty in this country. Can you imagine what you contribute to the country is poverty? And we're saying this should be opportunity for us to address the issues of poverty that we are talking about that actually has gone to 7% in terms of poverty. Ideally, that means when you get 100 people in actually 70 are poor. No, the recent UPOS report says 70%. It used to be 67.7, now it's gone to 70%. Karamoja was 65.7, it has also gone up. Lango is about 35. We are saying, what is happening? This is an opportunity to discuss. What is happening? We also have a burning issue about the return of the appropriation bill to parliament, which affected the budget of northern Uganda other than any other place. And we are saying, is it possible to discuss and deal with these issues? And many other issues, the roads, the education, the health sectors, and all in northern Uganda, and we were really shocked to hear the leader opposition who should be supporting this initiative. He sits in the Commission of Parliament of Uganda. This issue was announced in Parliament of Uganda. When there was a state of nation address, the speaker announced it, and we wonder why this kind of passion come at the last minute to say the sitting is useless, it's too expensive, as if he doesn't read the budget of the Parliament of Uganda. Because on Monday when we got the information, this is ideally the normal business of Parliament of Uganda. The committee's budget will be used to facilitate this particular meeting. There has been no supplementary budget request for these regional sittings. It is a normal sitting the way we sit in Kampala. Then why is not complaining about sitting in Kampala? In other words, is this saying that we should stop Parliament of Uganda and we operate only with the executive? What is it? It is a normal sitting taken to the people who voted the members of parliament in this parliament of Uganda. And therefore, in this sitting, we are here to pronounce ourselves and say we are against that decision of the leader of opposition. Some of us are opposition. We don't need to post everything in this country. There are things for this country that we need to support, and there are things you can say no. So this is wrong, and we are not going to accept it. And we are talking to the leader of opposition of this country and people in opposition, including myself, that when it comes to things that will deal with the concern of the citizens of Uganda, we have to deal with it. From northern Uganda, we will deal with the problem in central Uganda. We will deal with the problem in eastern Uganda. We will deal with the problem in western Uganda. Actually, this is now trying to comply with what is in the constitution of Uganda for regional government which should have addressed the problem in the country other than piecemeal way of handling problems in the country. So we are happy that you are here. This is what I can say for now. I give time for members to come in. Thank you very much. Yes, Chairman. Yesterday I watched news indeed. I, I watched when the leader of opposition and his shadow cabinet were making statements that they, were, they are not interested in the regional sittings. It is unfortunate perhaps that the regional sittings are going to start with Northern Uganda. I hope he would have said the same if the regional sittings were starting in another region. So I received that news painfully too, and I imagined that it is not right for someone to oppose everything. Their affinity for relevance shouldn't make us fail to think objectively. At least it should allow the, 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 this sitting to go on. If there is need to save, then you can save from the sittings from the next regions. Yes, the next regions that are near Kampala. For all these years we've been sitting in Kampala, we've been receiving delegations from institutions, from schools, from where, because of the the proximity to where the, the parliament sits. There is no way our people can even access their parliament. 
So this gesture that Parliamentary Commission decided to take the Parliament to the people of Northern Uganda is a good one. A right-thinking leader of opposition should have supported it. The question of expenditure, saving costs, it is room for him to even imagine it. Actually, it is blackmail to you, the voters, that the leader of opposition is interested in saving costs, even if, even if he talks about 20 billion. That money would actually be spent even if it is sitting here. If he talks about 20 billion against a 72 billion, trillion budget which he is aware of. Why can't he examine the budget and look for where money can be saved? The question of saving costs should not even arise. The question of pretending to be ignorant that he was not served, looking for relevance from everything is not right. I want to challenge you Ugandans. It is true that Uganda is big. Uganda is not just Kampala. You are aware of of it. If the rest of Uganda now say, okay, let's boycott everything and we leave Kampala to be, or we leave another, it is wrong for our country. We don't want to divide this country. Let politics not be a reason for doing that. It is a good thing for this parliament to have a city in northern Uganda. Then you can save costs from other areas. We can tell you where to save costs from if the leader of opposition is interested in cost saving. It is disappointing. I didn't receive that, good, that news. In, in any way, it is not good news at all. The leader of opposition, who is supposed to, to speak for everyone in this country, and for everyone, including those ones in northern Uganda, can reason like this. Is he feeling uncomfortable with his cabinet that the, 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 the account part in Kampala is going to be destabilized for three days? Can't we, can't we manage the discomfort for three days and we take the parliament to the people of northern Uganda, then we come back? And then we will cancel. We can cancel the one for Western Uganda if, you, if that one is one, don't want. We can cancel the one for, for Masaka. Since Masaka is near Kampala, so that you, you, you feel it. We can cancel the one in Imbale because it's a few hundred, a few, a few, a few kilometers to Kampala. But this one in Gulu must happen. Or else we will see what happens to this country, which we say is ours for all of us. It's not a country for you, for Kampala only. I come from the, the district called Amulata, and I represent the county of Kyoga North. I received this message last evening. It is an unfortunate message from the leader of opposition. Actually, to me, I call it childish message. For the first time, we are having a, a leader of opposition who can talk like the way he talked yesterday. This is a chance for Northern Uganda. Some of you doesn't know what Northern Uganda is. Number one, Northern Uganda is the center of Uganda. My place, Amulata, is the center of Uganda. Not actually Uganda here. The center is there. That's one thing from Northern Uganda. Two. I'm in the Committee of Trade and Tourism. Yesterday we were discussing and we are going for a meeting right now to decide where, what, what activities we are going to do because we are one of the committees who are supposed to go in the field and report to Parliament in Guru on 28th. And one of the things we are going to do is to look at the tourist sites in northern Uganda where people don't know so that we add on the income for this country. We put in light to the, the, the nation that we have sites which should be visited. And we shall, you, the press, will be in Gulu and this thing will come to Parliament. Two, we intend to meet the traders at the sub regional level in Lira, in Karamoja, in Gulu, and then in West Nile. There are issues there, like there are those people who are supplied food in the Sudan. Some eight years ago, they have not been paid up to now. When we talk here, people don't understand. But when we talk in Bulu, where these traders are, I know most of them will be there. How can someone do business eight years ago and you don't pay him billions of savings that he has? So we need to get the polite of our traders as the trade committee, and then we report to parliament. 
It's a chance for us as Northern Uganda to do this. It has never happened when you talk from here. We have been talking from here. Nothing has happened. Like they have talked about the uh, cattle compensation. I don't want to repeat that because I leave others for my friends here. So we are going there, and I think this is a very good idea. If I'm to say it, I think this is the best parliament we have ever had. Although we have people like, like the leader of opposition who should have not been actually in the 11th parliament because it's diluting everything. There are people who want to catch the press in the, the image of the press every day. They want to be around the press by doing wrong things. And one of them is the leader of opposition. So we are saying, whether come rain, sunshine, we are going to be in Gulu. And this thing is supported by over 70% of parliament. And we approved this budget in parliament. If he wanted to disapprove us, he would have done it in parliament. But after approval, unfortunately, I think the day we were approving budget, he was not even there. I don't know where he had gone as a leader of opposition. He was on trips, and he doesn't know what is happening here. That's why he's talking like that. So, for us, as people from northern Uganda, I think this is a very good thing for us. Next time when we go come to central here, there are some of us who doesn't know part of the central Uganda here. I don't think the leader of opposition even knows Napa. Of even Amulatar here, he doesn't know. In Amor, I think he doesn't even know. Why can't he get this chance to go and know these places? Because he's going to be in parliament today. Huh? It's going to be in parliament today. Tomorrow you are not there. And you need these places. Productive places. People, they think northern as nothing. But when you reach there, that's when you will see it for yourself. So I think for us, we are taking this parliament to Gulu. And I want to thank the speaker for accepting to start with northern Uganda. Because we are, we are really in the problems more than other regions. So, we believe this parliament is going to uh, resolve a lot of things from northern Uganda. I beg to stop here. Press, um, I believe parliament, like any other institution, work based on the work plan. And um, the regional meeting it is part of the work plan that Parliament of Uganda has drawn, and this has been supported overwhelmingly by members of Parliament. I belong to the Democratic Party, and I'm the whip for the Democratic Party in Parliament. The news that came yesterday that the opposition have resolved that they may, and let us get this one very clear, it was not definitive. They said opposition may boycott the regional meeting. That I believe there is still room for persuading them to take part in the regional meeting. Not everything must be seen from the negative side. I would urge the opposition to take advantage of this regional meeting to make their presence felt in this regional meeting of parliament. We are to check government in its excesses so this is an opportunity for the opposition to shine in Gulu, for the opposition to shine in Masaka, for the opposition to shine in Barara, and for the opposition to shine in Mbale. It is only the elite who follow what goes on in Kampala. But when it comes to decision, during voting, it is the ordinary Ugandans down there who may not access what goes on in Kampala. When we are in Gulu, when we are, we are in Barara, when we are in Masaka, when we are in Bale, it will not only be the plenary 
we will have opportunities to interact with the local masses down there. What an opportunity that parliament has offered. And I urge the opposition to take advantage of this. In terms of expenditure, this is the budget of parliament which we would still spend in any case, even if we don't go for regional meetings. Committees of parliament will still continue going for oversight, inland trips. This money will still be blown. So there is nothing to do with cost saving. This is still the budget of parliament. When we go to the regional meetings, committees of parliament will go there prior for their normal oversight and then come for this meeting. I would ask the opposition again, let us not boycott, let us take advantage of this regional meeting and also gain from it as a way of reaching out to the people as we, together with parliament, deliberate for specific issues that affect each region. Thank you. The first region that has been selected is Northern Uganda. And it is unfortunate that all the statements being made by the leader of opposition are focusing on Northern Uganda. I am the chairperson of Equal Opportunities Committee at Parliament of Uganda. Opportunities should be given to the people we represent here. For the people we serve in this country. And I'm happy that this parliament is going to have its first regional sitting in Gulu. Now, one thing that I don't understand with the leader of opposition is that sometimes he's not informed. He's not informed. I assume the leader of opposition did not get the details of this uh, sitting, the regional sittings. And I'm annoyed with him. Because first of all, every consultation has been met, including the technical people from parliament coming to interact with us, the members of parliament, of what key issues we have to address in northern Uganda. And we have given them. So is the leader of opposition aware of this? And secondly, I want to tell the leader of opposition that anything concerning northern Uganda, as we have been interacting on the floor of parliament, has been brought down. This is a very unfortunate situation that we are seeing the leader of opposition, who is supposed to be exemplary in the way he's doing easy things. But the good thing is that other members of opposition are not with him. And we are going with the people who will go with us. We are going with the people who will go with us. And even in this conference, we have oppositions who will be present there and listening very attentively and participating when parliament is sitting in Gulu. Now, what is it that northern Uganda has done to the people of this nation, that they don't consider northern Uganda as part of the country. Do we need to continue advocating for the Nile Republic to be established, as it was one time proposed by Honorable Norbert Mao? Do we need to say that we have, we have to really operationalize regional governments so that we see other parts of this country developing? What is wrong with taking parliament to northern region and other regions? What's wrong with that? And if the leader of opposition doesn't want it, for us we are even coming to central Uganda. We are going to begin from northern Uganda. If the next one is central and which is going to take place in Masaka, we are there. The one of eastern, we are there. The one of western in Barara, we are there. We are not saying if the leader of opposition with this team, the team that is following him, will not go to northern Uganda. It will not prevent us from traversing this country so that we see 
how developments are being placed in each region. And we compare, and that is what we are advocating for. Regional balance, equal opportunities to be given to the nation. So for me, I'm not happy with what the leader of opposition had yesterday with his team in a press conference like this one. So I'm calling upon everybody outside there because we have people who will sit in the gallery and that will be the members of the community. People coming from Karamoja, from Gulu, I mean from Acholi, from West Nile, from Lango sub-region. They will be sitting in the gallery because we are going to discuss issues that affect them directly. Just like it will be done in any other region that we are going to, to sit, I mean to have parliament sitting in. So for us, as far as the cost that the leader of opposition is talking about, I want to assure him that committees that have been selected will be going to these regions. And they have already been consulted. So not even every committee is going. And even the money that will be spent will be committee's money. Just like we do oversight. And we spend money eh, facilitating the oversights that we, we have, we usually have. So that is going to be the money for oversight that will be spent. Now, where is the waste, wastage the uh, our leader of opposition is talking about? Where is the wastage of the five billion is talking about? Unfortunately, it is not even reaching five billion because this is committee's money, not his money, not even right honorable speaker's money. It is committee's money. It has been approved in the budget. So what is his problem? Is he jealous with Northern Uganda? Let him tell us. We have ever been hearing him. If he's jealous, let, his, let him come openly to tell us he's jealous of Northern Uganda. And he doesn't want development in Northern Uganda. I've never seen this kind of leader of opposition in this parliament who really defies everything. Eh? He wants to oppose everything, even a small thing, which common sense can teach him to even get an answer. Does he have common sense? I thank you. I join my colleagues in airing my views and concerns in response to the statements are issued by the leader of opposition, Honorable Joel Senyon. There are two allegations he raises as a basis for his call for boycott. Number one, he says Parliament is going to spend five billion in each region and that would total up to 20 billion. And he says that is a waste of taxpayers' money. He goes on to say that the money Parliament wants to waste should be spent on committee activities and others. I want to respond to that before I touch on the other one. Number one is that the leader of opposition is not only misinforming the population, but I think his intention is to sabotage the regional meeting. Because he knows that this is an activity that is planned for and budgeted for and is not going to attract or draw any other money from any vote except what was planned for. The leader of the opposition knows that the processes involved in coming up with government budget, including that of parliament. It's a long process. I am not sure whether it takes time to scrutinize the budget. This is something that was in the budget. 
And so it's not a special thing. <coughs> Number two is allegation that this activity takes away monies for committees is false. I chair a committee and I've been a chair of different committees. And I can tell you, every financial year and every quarter, each committee receives what we call IPF, Indicative Planning Figure. We receive our budget for every quarter. Once the committee receives their budget, they know that we have this amount for this quarter, and that determines the what activities they will have. We have been receiving this, and even this quarter as I speak, every committee has a budget. So the activity, the sitting in, in Gulu for northern Uganda, is not going to attract any special budget for parliament or any special budget for committees. We are here in this number because majority of our members have gone to the field. They're in the field. They are in northern Uganda. The committee I chair is preparing to go to northern Uganda. And we will be looking at the aspect of the functionality of service commission, uh, recruitment in local governments, payroll management. That is what we are looking at. But we are giving special attention to northern Uganda because parliament is going to northern Uganda. So this is not, there is no special budget. And we are saying what Honorable Joel is talking about is false because we have interacted with the leadership of parliament. We have asked them what financial implication this activity will put on the budget of parliament. It is a normal activity planned. If this was just being introduced now without having it in our work plan for this financial year, that would be a concern. So why did the leader of the opposition not raise this concern during the planning and budgeting processes? Why did he not raise it? He sits on the commission. He sits, he's a member of the business committee. These are committees that are very important in decision making. He's aware of all this. But besides that, this communication was made several months ago several months ago, both in Parliament and even during the, the State of the Nation and budget speech period. The leader of the opposition has been quiet. He waits now just because he wants to, uh, to frustrate it. I think this is unfortunate and he needs to reflect deeply because that is not how we are supposed to conduct business. So the, the, the story that this is going to, uh, to waste taxpayers' money <coughs> And by the way, when you look at our budget as parliament, look at the budget for last financial year, and look at the, the total budget for parliament for this financial year, there is little difference. It has actually gone down. And so, we may try to appear nice to the public, we may try to impress the public, but in doing so, we should not misinform the public. And it's my hope that the leader of the opposition will spend a lot more time to get to understand these facts and provide you know, correct information. The other allegation he raises is that there was no proper consultation. This gentleman sits on different platforms, different committees. These are things that have been discussed repeatedly. And I can tell you, the leaders from northern Uganda have had several in engagement with the leadership of, 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 of parliament. And so when we hear such a statement, we think it's coming from an angle that is biased, that is malicious, but I also think it's intended to continue with the blackmail that has been going on, painting parliament dirty. That is unfortunate. So we want to call upon our colleague, Honorable Joel, to have sober discussions with the leadership of parliament. Because if the leadership of parliament is saying the budget is talking about is not true, where is he, where is he getting his figures from? Is he trying to exaggerate things, to cause anger and frustrate or kill the spirit? I don't think that is right. The second thing I want to emphasize, just like my colleagues have said, 
The intention of Parliament to take these sittings to the regions are very clear. One is to take Parliament closure to the citizens down there. And Parliament should be commended for this. But also, secondly, this is an opportunity for Parliament to pay special attention to every region. Now it's preparing to go to northern Uganda. All the committees are focused there. When we are going to eastern Uganda, all the committees will give their attention. When we are, so it's an opportunity to get to understand deeper every aspect, every region. And I don't think Honorable Joel should look at it in bad faith. But I also know there is politics at play. We know there are different parties, including where Honorable Joel comes from. So if he has a problem with Masaka, where Honorable Mpuga comes from, that is their, their, their own problem. We know there is politics at play. We are also informed that the president will go to open the one in, in, in Gulu, and we know that Honorable Joel has repeatedly boycotted every event where the president is. So if that is a strategy to demobilize Then we understand him. Because if you are talking about the budget, I don't think Honorable Joel understands uh, the budget. Because he has boycotted most of the activities in as far as the budget uh, processes are concerned. Even during the budget speech. And so we think this is ill-intended. But if the problem is taking Parliament away from Kampala, First of all, we are very comfortable sitting here in Kampala because it's part of Uganda. And we are proud that Parliament is here and all of us are here. But it shouldn't be a, pa a problem for Parliament to go to any part of, 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 of the country. All of us know the history of this Parliament right from 1888. And we know that in 1945, Parliament moved from Entebbe to Kampala. Parliament used to sit in, in Entebbe. So if Parliament is going to any other part of the country, it should be taken positively. But this also has a very big bearing on, on how the citizens of this country look at many political parties. And I want to be specific on the leader of the opposition. And this party, no. Number one, I want Honorable Joel to tell us from the time he has been leader of opposition, whether he has gone beyond Karumba. Whether he has gone beyond Karumba. I want him to, to just try to describe where Amolata or even Aleptong is located. Or even Obongi, where Obongi is located. I want him to try to... This is an opportunity for him and his party and his members. It is an opportunity. So you are not just going to be a leader of opposition here and you think you know, you, you know and understand Uganda. Get out and get to understand the country. Because you are a leader of opposition for all the members of parliament in this, in this country. You don't speak for one area. I also know that Honorable Joel doesn't want to talk about the things that matter and affect other parts of the country. Let him tell me whether he has talked. He has, I, want, I want to hear how he has talked about the plights of the Karamojong. I want to hear how he has talked about the plight of the, the, the children suffering from nodding syndrome. I want to hear how he has talked about the killings in Apa and other places. I want, there are a lot of things. These are things that the, the leader of opposition should be seen strongly talking about and condemning. We are not against anybody advocating for realistic usage of resources. We don't support wasted of ta taxpayers' money. But you cannot bring that to hoodwink the citizens. There are no facts in that. And we need, we, we, we need to be clear in, in, in putting that. So if there is a deliberate plan to frustrate anything to do with northern Uganda, it's understandable. But if there is any no ill intention, then the leader of the opposition should, one, sit with his colleagues, the leadership of parliament, because it's part of the leadership. He should sit with them and sort that. Number two, 
he needs to, because he's leader of opposition and there are opposition members from northern Uganda, but also from the different regions. Has he had the time to sit with those elites from the different regions to hear their opinion? He has not. Honorable Court is from northern Uganda. Honorable Akol is from northern Uganda. Has he had time to sit and dialogue with them and get to understand what is going on? He has not. And that is leadership. He should do it. Not just hold a press conference and issue your own opinion. Who do you then lead? So he needs to interact with the leaders and get our opinion. Otherwise, he's likely to be misunderstood if he doesn't talk to people. And finally, when we are talking about wastage of resources, we should, we should, not, we should not apply uh, the principle of selective memory or selective justice. If the leader of the opposition was coming up to say, I don't want to have a budget for donation, because the leader of the opposition also has a budget for donation, If you are talking about trimming and making, you, making sure you have realistic budget, you should talk about, you know, what we consider not really very relevant. That includes the allocation to RIM in form of donation, money for donation, as he talked about it. So there are a lot of things we need to talk about. But we are concerned as leaders from northern Uganda, but this is not just all about northern Uganda. This is about the spirit parliament is demonstrating and we think we should support it. So that's what I wanted to add.